we supplement stuff. Now, the manufactured foods for them have some vitamins and calcium. Calcium deficiency is a really big problem with pet reptiles. They can develop NBD, metabolic bone disease, where their bones end up being like rubbery, and they start having bow legs and issues with their backs. So calcium is very, very important. Now, bearded dragons are a really great first-time reptile pet. As you can tell, they tolerate handling really well. They've got tons of personality. There's two main moves that a bearded dragon will do. Pardon me, I'm not used to having a hand microphone, so I kind of go to show them. All right, it didn't work that way. Um, bearded dragons have two moves. One is it's a vigorous, very vigorous head bob. The males do that more than the females. Male bearded dragons can be jerks. Anytime anybody comes into the room or their area, they're like, I'm defending my area. Head bob, head bob, head bob. And I've had people ask me, I know this sounds crazy, but my bearded dragon is waving at me. He said, oh yeah, they do that. Sometimes they actually just wave. But if they do a slow wave, this is, I get it. You're submissive. I'm not the alpha. Years ago, way before he was even around, years ago we went to the San Diego Zoo and I stayed mostly in the reptile area because they have Komodo dragons. <laughs> I was in heaven. But they have a huge concrete circle there. They have like 30 or 40 beardies out there getting sun. And we ran up and Darren's like, what are you going to do? Nothing bad. And I waited until nobody was watching and I head bobbed with my head in my hands. And more than half of those suckers picked up their heads and ran over and started head bobbing. So I went like this. And they walked away like, yeah, I thought that's what you said. <laughs> so they're really great pets. And I, I beg people to research them because we're not just an education group, we're a rescue group. And we get some animals in really bad condition. Sometimes it's just reptile hospice, yeah. making them comfortable until they pass, which breaks my heart. And Darren's seen me broken and crying and sobbing quite often. So I, I definitely don't want somebody with their first time pet to have to go through that. It's better to buy from breeders than pet stores. Pet stores mean well, but live animals are merchandise, and they get them as young as possible to extend their shelf life. And really young baby beardies and leopard geckos and stuff are kind of tricky to stay alive unless you know what you're doing. So it's better to go to like reptile expos and stuff. We'll be outside after the thing for about 20, 30 minutes, and we'll have business cards and stuff. Email is the best way to reach me because I sleep work schedules. But we will find, help you decide what's the best reptile pet for you and your family, and we will walk you through the perfect setup. Reptiles are ectothermic. That means they don't make any heat of their own. Uh, we're endothermic. When we're hot, we sweat. When we're cold, we shiver. Or we go put something on. And I've had people go, that's OK. I made him a sweater. I'm like, OK, clothing and blankets work by trapping our body's heat and keeping it around us, which is why when you've been really vigorously exercising, you get hotter because all that heat's trapped. If the animal doesn't make heat in the first place, it's a nice, soft, fluffy thing for them, but it doesn't work. So they have to have things set up, and they need to thermoregulate. You ever see those uh, National Geographic and Animal Planet things where you see the crocodiles and alligators basking in the sun? but their mouths are wide open. Sometimes, well this is called gaping. Sometimes it's like a, I am challenging you and showing you how big my mouth is. But a lot of times if they're out in the sun, reptiles love the sun, but they start to overheat, they'll open their mouth to let that excess heat out so they can stay. Because anything a, uh, anything a reptile does requires heat. They can't even digest food without heat. 